you're, you're prepared, you're ready to, to stand by yourself, but your neighbors may need some assistance as well. So by getting into that small group, the Neighborhood Watch, is a great way to, uh, to get started. I, I agree. I think, okay, so it's all coming together right now. I've heard over and over for a while, not in this conversation, but in my daily life, I've heard grassroots. Um, weekly, I hear it a lot, especially with all the politics and everything, getting back down to grassroots, and that's exactly what it is. It's just getting down to it, because you, um, one person, you need a community. You need a community, and that's what you're talking about, is your neighbors. We need to back, get back there to know our neighbors. Quit putting up the fences, just like back in the old days, right? We didn't have fences. The neighbors talked to each other. The women talked to each other when they did their laundry, right? We grew crops, it was just like my grandparents, that we still have that farm. It's not being cultivated right now. But you, and in farming communities, rural communities, you grew your crops, and when you had an overabundance, you go to your neighbors and you give them. You don't sell them. You say, what do you need? And they do the same thing back. You go to the communities. You find out. You get to know the people in the community. You find out. We're not all knowledgeable about everything, so that's why you get to know your neighbor. We get to know that person. That person ends up to be a lawyer. That person we find out when we need, when we have questions concerning law, we go to that person. That's how we meet people. I know things that some other person needs. That's why we go to the community. We have these meetings because we learn it's from the grassroots, right? That's exactly what it is. We get to know each other and we use each other's resources. And that's how we do it. And we just learn from each other and we quit taking advantage of the system. All right, anyone? Because I'm done. All right, Gary. Um, we live in a town here, we now have a Walmart, and we expect everything to be on the shelf at Walmart. However, should there be a major earthquake or should there be anything that would shut down the systems coming out of California, bringing us the supplies that we get? Tomorrow's supplies are on the road. They may, they may get here. The second day supplies are not gonna get here. And unless we're prepared for something, we're going to be sitting here with absolutely nothing because they're not coming. We're, we're a small town like this is the last one to receive aid in a, in a major emergency. They, Las Vegas will get theirs. We'll be sitting out here with absolutely nothing. So if we're not prepared with a certain amount of water, um, most people are prepared food in their homes for about three days, maybe two. The third, fourth day is chaos. Without water, the second day is chaos. So I would suggest that everybody at least be thinking in, the, in those, those terms, because you're not going to see help out here in two or three days should, should anything like that ever hit. I would like you to have been a town board member, a county commissioner, I have requested that these groups need them here. They need to be listening to us, not sitting up there on the stage, giving us three minutes about a particular subject, and they never talk about this. And if we think being prepared is important, who's helping our town people know this? And if we're going to be on Channel 41, maybe they'll see us. But very few people even watch Channel 41. Very few people take Pahrump Valley Times. Very few people have any way of knowing anything except dancing with the stars. Uh, Katrine here, I, as gave me a little bit of advice one day, and I think it's very wise of her to tell all those that she needs to know about this. Um, there is a pump out, uh, a hand pump that you put on your well, and it may take a little bit of time or someone to know how to do that, but you can get your well out of your water, or your water out of your well, 
if you don't have electricity. And I think this is something that all of us that own a well need to know about and need to take responsibility for because those around us are not going to have that. And so this, this is one way that we can reach out to our neighbors and to our friends and to our community is if we have access to that water and they don't. Simplepump.com. Simplepump.com. I'd like to jump back over here. What Gary was uh, alluding to, I believe, is that it's very easy as a neighbor and in a community to withdraw mm -hmm. because we have a double, we got two cars in our garage and we can get by, or we can go up to Reno with our kids and hang out for the rest of our lives. And it's very easy to withdraw from society and from our friends when times get difficult. What we got to do as a community is an anticipate. Uh, we cannot predict jobs tomorrow or five years out today. We know that. We do not know what this 21st, this new economy is all about yet. We hope it's energy. We hope it's other things. Manufacturing isn't coming back, folks. Globally, we, we spread it out there. But I do believe that there is a point if we work together in neighborhood groups. You mentioned a neighborhood watch that basically we start taking care of one another and looking after. You know, it's almost reverting back to the 50s and the 60s when we had, and, and you're absolutely right, uh, we were all out on the front porches talking with neighbors and, and socializing. And maybe we're going to, we need to come back to that and start thinking how we can get our children and others to come to that kind of a society. We could be heading there, I think. I do have another thought. Um, if Right now, not very many of us have gardens in this town, and we all know about gardens because we grew up on a farm or, or did that in our past. So, you know, why can't, except a few of us, why can't we all put some seed, packets of seed away? You know, we may not need it next year, but if we have packets of carrots or, or whatever, we can grow something. If we don't have the, those packets of seed, we're going to be up the creek. And that may be one chance that we have for a little bit of survival. It may take a couple of months, but we're going to have a product in our in our yard. Well, talking about the garden, it might work out here and it might not because there's too many rabbits eat the garden. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't mean I don't mean to be uh, too too harsh about this situation, but we we really have grown up all as very independent individuals and, and we've come to depend on our families our our immediate families not even our extended families any longer and, and this has come home to me because now I have, I have to live with my daughter for a while and and it's the strangest thing in the world I, I, we've been apart for we've been apart for 40 years and all of a sudden I'm I'm living with my daughter and and it's a very unusual situation but it that that's us that, that's our culture that's like that it's not like that everywhere um I just came from Alaska where they don't have to have this conversation they really don't um because they know each other they have fences but they also have boats and they have cars and they have bicycles and they and they walk when nothing else works because everything is local they don't have to go 10 miles to Walmart they only have to go at the most 2 miles down to the uh to the grocery store where they buy probably a third of their food the rest of the food is grown or they fish for it. They're very independent. And if somebody's sick in their family, in their extended family, somebody takes care of them. It's, and nobody has to call. You don't have to call and say, I can't come over today. I don't feel good. 
because the, somebody all in the family already knows and is there taking care of it. And, and it's a cultural thing that, that I've never, um, I'm certainly not going to take credit for it. I'm not going to take blame for it. It's just something that I grew up with like everybody else did. But once I got exposed to it, I realized the advantages of not living entirely off the grid, but not being entirely dependent on the grid, which we are now. And, and as a manager, as responsible for your lives for the three or four days that, that uh, when the power goes out, I know that I have to provide for your safety and your well-being for several days before somebody with more responsibility and authority than me steps in and takes care of it. And all of that takes planning. And while the, while the Haida Indians didn't have a written plan about what happens when two or three of their families get sick, they just knew what they were going to do. We don't know what we're going to do. I don't know why we don't know that, but we should know what happens if the power goes out for three days. We need to have a plan. We need to somebody, somebody responsible has to sit down, and, and there's people that are responsible in this county and at the town to do that, and you need to hold them accountable so that they are prepared when things go bad and you need help because we're working on a whole entirely different system than most of the rest of the world. You know, uh, you, you brought up a good point about combining households. What's, what do you feel about that? That goes on, but how would it impact us? How would you feel about combining um, multi-generational in one household. <laughs> well, as Carolyn said, and that's one of the thoughts that uh, this, what has happened, taking care of each other, looking for, out for each other. Um, I have children that live in a Mountain Falls that have lost their house. I have children that live in the, uh, on the other side of town and, uh, and they were losing their house. And so when we look at uh, how does families moving in together? We see that more and more. What our community right now is facing the situation where we have over 100 children that are going from house to house. And um, that's one of the things that uh, we need to look at, and that's one of the things that the community is coming together on more. But it needs to be put out there more, and that, uh, and just like in our faith-based organizations, and that's one of, on your, on your brochures, communities can institute by local, and the second is that business community groups and faith-based organizations can provide more, um, well, it says child care. Well, we look at uh, our rules and regulations that we have today that limit our ability to perform things for families that we would do, uh, but that we're governed by regulation. So how can we as a community um, work together so that we benefit one another instead of trying to uh, to cut the feet out from under us. That is a real problem. Uh, you know, I'm from Las Vegas, not from Pahrump. And uh, the gentleman over there uh, mentioned about uh, holding the, uh, our, our, uh, town, our town fathers uh, feet to the far, fire as far as doing these uh, emergency preparedness um, plans. But you, we as a community need to try to get involved with that. Uh, in Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas Metro uh, Police have a volunteer uh, organization where you can you you call up and you can uh, become a volunteer. And there's some very limited roles that you can play, but you can still get involved and learn to you know and meet the uh, police in your area and get involved with some of these uh, these activities. In the smaller the town, it seems to me, would be the easier to get involved with these kinds of things. Volunteer fire departments. Do you have a volunteer fire department here in Pahrump? No. 
Right. And okay. And so now we have a problem because between the unions and the insurance companies, it makes it very difficult to render assistance to them. And, you know, and I don't know how to overcome that except for maybe.